My first question, how has your writing process changed compared to when you first started writing to where you are now? It's changed a lot. I think one of the biggest points that has changed is that when I first started writing, I was like, especially back in like middle school and high school, I was definitely more of a pantser where I just didn't have an outline. I just wrote whatever I wanted to. Um, but now, as of right now, I'm really much more so a plotter. And so I try and like detail out what I'm going to write before I write it. That way I'm not overwhelmed or I don't get stuck or anything like that. I think that's been the biggest. Somebody is doing something loud outside, but hopefully it's not too loud. Well, I um, hear it, so. Okay, good. <laughs> They're like chopping down a tree next door. And I'm like, great, thanks. Um, but otherwise, I think that's probably the biggest thing is just now I'm more of an outliner and that's really streamlined my whole process. Okay. Um, so how do you feel? I've been following you on Instagram for a while, so I've kind of seen like all your posts and stuff like that. So how do you feel about the fact that most of your books are over a year old now? It feels so weird. <laughs> it feels so weird. It like, I think all of my books except for one are now over a year old and it's bizarre to me because especially for like two kinds of us it feels like I just released that book like I was just promoting for it and it was a whole year ago that it came out now and it's just bizarre it's weird to think that so much has happened in such a short amount of time um it's so weird <laughs> yeah um so I, if I remember correctly, there were some books in the Love and Fenton County series that were never like published. Like I know you had some ideas and then they just never got written. So I'm really curious if they had been published, was there ever like some sort of crossover with all your characters from all the books where they like all came together, kind of like MCU, Marvel Cinematic Universe style kind of thing? Yeah, that would be so fun for one. Um, I never really planned a book like that. I do have a short story that I had written like that. I think it's like, um, I wrote it last December and it was um, a New Year's Eve kind of party at one of the coffee shops um, in the, one of the books. And all of the characters kind of like filter through the coffee shop and stuff. Um, like, so that was like one last hurrah for the whole Love and Fenton County. Um, but that's as far as I've gone to make anything about a crossover like that. Although that'd be so fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, was that short story released? It was on Patreon. Okay. So, so it's it was only exclusively to them, but yeah. Okay. Um, which of your couples do you think would get married first and what kind of wedding do you think they would have because I know you did like a poll of like which do you think like asking fans who would get married first but I'm curious like what you think about that that's a really good question I'm looking at all my posters yeah, um I like a snippet of <laughs> out of my league on the corner of the screen yeah I I think um that is a really good question well it also comes down to like who would propose first too I feel like it's probably like, uh, I would say probably can't catch a breath, the couple from can't catch a breath. I could see them getting married first because uh, I feel like they're two like really down to earth and like level-headed couples. I feel like they're both kind of more on the realistic side rather than like the lovey-dovey honeymoon phase of stuff. So I feel like I could see them getting married first. And since Addie is like a hardcore planner, she would definitely plan out the entire wedding herself. She would love that. Yeah. And yeah. And I feel like it'd be really, I feel like it would be laid back too, because he's in a band. So I feel like it would be laid back and like not so it wouldn't be like cocktail attire or anything like that. Mm -hmm. it'd, be really, it'd be really fun <laughs> yeah do you think untapped potential would play at the wedding <laughs> I, think so. I think so I think they would have to especially since um before they were a band without Vincent and his drummer so I feel like definitely that they would definitely play a song oh my gosh that'd be so cute 
good. And I was thinking like what you said earlier in terms of like who would propose first. I think Walsh would make like an epic proposal. Yeah. I could definitely see that. That's what I, I was going to say. It's either between out of my league or can't catch my breath. I could see like Sophia accepting a proposal because I could definitely see Walsh proposing first. Mm-hmm. But I feel like she'd be, I feel like she might put it off, like do a long engagement. Yeah. I could see that for her. <laughs> um. So how does it feel to be getting closer to the release of Teaching the Teacher's Pet? Like, what have you been doing to prepare for the release? Because I know it's like a big thing to prepare for. Yeah, actually, before I even hopped on the Zoom, I was making um some of the graphics with the quotes and everything involved. Um, mm-hmm. So that's one thing that I've been doing. I am getting ready to start um, kind of like proofreading it on my phone. And so that's been another like last little bit with the book that I need to finalize. But otherwise, um, I'm trying to get everything around ahead of time. So that way I'm not scrambling on release week to have content made and all that stuff. Um, so it's it's been nice to kind of just gather everything beforehand and f- trying to figure out when to launch the paperback pre-order. That's another thing that I'm doing, so... Are you doing like um, signed copy pre-orders again this time with like all the fun goodie stuff? Yeah, I definitely am. And I feel like I'm a lot more confident with doing the signed paperbacks this time. Because in the past, I feel like there's a hiccup every single time I do a signed paperback like order. Um, But I feel like this time I feel more confident because I'm going to have like the entire month of July where I'm not like I'm, I'm finished. Do you know what I mean? So it's not like I'm scrambling to get the book done. It'll be done. So it's not like I'll find last minute typos or anything like that. Um, And so I have time to kind of delay the printing for the personal copies. And so it just gives me a little more time. And so the the overall answer is yes, I am doing that. (laughs) But it's just going to be a lot stress-free this time. That's good. (laughs) It's always good. Yeah. Did you have to do any, because I know you were talking in your vlogs recently about having to do a lot of research about football. Um, so did you have to do any research like that to write about baseball in Out of My League? Actually, no. I I did play softball in like elementary school. So I knew the basics of baseball like I, there's some crossover obviously between softball and baseball so I knew the basics I knew like the positions and stuff like that so fortunately no I didn't have to do too much research um with out of my league in baseball and I should have just done a baseball series instead of a foot like a football based one but <laughs> it's fine <laughs> Yeah, you're not alone. I don't understand football either. (laughs) And I didn't realize how little I knew until I started talking about it. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if that's actually a thing or not. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So all of your books have protagonists in high school. So I'm curious, what were you like in high school? (laughs) And which of your characters do you think you were the most like in high school? I was really quiet in high school. I I would say I'm def I was definitely quiet. I had a very small class size, so I kind of just stuck to myself, stuck to my books and stuff. Um, but if I had to pick who I was most like, hmm, I feel well. It's kind of funny because I feel like none of my characters kind of are really quiet on the quiet side. Like none of the, like the main characters are really that quiet. Maybe I'd be the most like, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Distel. Maybe Distel. I would probably say because I liked to um, switch up a lot between like my whole styles, like she does. Um, I didn't attach different personalities to them like she does, but I I did like to dress drastically different either from like really girly or like kind of more tomboyish not tomboy that's a weird word but um more kind of like goth I don't even know the word I want to use but ripped jeans combat boots that kind of style sometimes you know I think it's like grunge kind of grunge yeah yes grunge there we go (laughs) I went through a grunge phase too when I was in middle school (laughs) 
Yes. I was like, goth is not right, but yes, grunge. Oh, what a time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so what are some of your favorite romance tropes? Like even the ones that you haven't written yet in your books? So I feel like my uh, all-time, do I want to say all-time favorite? One I really, really, really love is like the forbidden love kind of trope. Um, the book that always comes to mind, like right off the bat is um, uh, Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. Um, those two main characters can't be together. And I just love the whole, like, you want to be with somebody, but you can't, you know? I think that's, I don't uh, it just really gets my heart pumping. I love it. <laughs> but I think another one that is one of my favorites is actually the fake relationship trope because I just love seeing how you can start off like not liking somebody, like you're with them for like a business proposal kind of, and then it morphs into you like getting to know them more and falling in love. I think that's one of the most romantic ones for me, and, like one of the most like fun, totally not realistic, but totally fun. <laughs> Yeah, I'm writing um, fake dating right now, and I wrote Forbidden Love in my last book, and it's so, both of them are so much fun. Yes, oh, I love them both. I, I love reading Forbidden Romance. I feel like I've tried to write it once, and I just, like, as a writer, I'm like, okay, I just need them together. I just need them together, you know what I mean? So I feel like as a writer, I don't have enough patience for it. Yeah, um, have you ever thought about writing that trope? for like a book yeah it's it's definitely bounced around I think in one of my books in this new series it might be kind of like a sub trope or like a secondary trope um but I don't know if it's ever been one that's a main thing um not yet I, I think there's a night there's a few ideas that I could play around with if I ever like wanted to fully flesh out a plot for it um but maybe one day <laughs> yeah I feel like Harry and Distel could kind of be that's true. Love a little bit. Yeah, that's true. Somebody else pointed out the other day, they're like, oh, is this kind of like star-crossed lovers vibes? And I'm like, oh, it is. Look, I didn't even think of it that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, so going off of that, can you say anything about what tropes will be in the most likely two series? Because I know you said that the first one is enemies to lovers, which I'm super excited about um so can you say anything about the others yet yeah well hmm I feel like I mean I I don't mind sharing everything all at once you know like I'm the kind of person who definitely wants to share everything and I'm trying to think of like what are the most likely two titles because I I know I've shared those like um book two is most likely to never have their first kiss um I know that one off the top of my head but I cannot remember the other ones but so I feel like one that is definitely going to be in there is fake dating for sure so I do have another fake dating one coming which is exciting um and honestly I think I'm trying to think if I have a new trope involved other than enemies to lovers um I don't know if I do and I don't have my notebook in front of me or else I would have checked but so there is going to be some repeats so that's a little hint um but definitely fake relationships that's exciting that was actually going to be my next question too was would there be any repeats yes there is there's there is there will be and I'm excited <laughs> that's very exciting um so will there be any cameos of characters from Love and Fencing County or do the two series take place in like entirely different towns and states? Because I know you've never said like explicitly where they take place. So Right. Yeah. I've played around with um, having character crossover. I'm so torn whether or not I want to do it. It definitely is going to be in a different town, but I haven't really thought of whether or not they're kind of in the same vicinity or not um they're going to be in different counties that's for sure so it's not going to be in like love and fenton county um but like they could be like neighboring counties i don't know i've definitely played around with it though because i feel like it would be so fun to like bring the two together but i just don't know how to i don't know i need to i need to think of a way to make it natural and realistic and not too forced do you know what i mean mm -hmm. 
Do you ever feel like strange doing the crossovers because like in Can't Catch My Breath and Two Kinds of Us where the characters repeated? Did you ever feel like readers who read one book or the other wouldn't like understand the crossover kind of thing? I think that's definitely a that was a big concern, especially for Can't Catch My Breath. I don't think I did it as well for those two books as I could have. Um, and especially going into this new series where there's going to be not a lot of character crossover, but like book one and two has character crossover, three and four has character crossover, um, and like that. So that's been definitely a concern. And I don't even know if I'm executing it correctly. I'm sending my book two to my developmental editor um, this week, actually. So we'll see if I can execute it properly, but it is a definitely, it's definitely challenging because I don't want readers to think like, oh, if you haven't read book one, book two won't make sense to you because I did have a few people say that about Can't Catch My Breath. Um, so it's just kind of like the balance of not too many details in one book or the other. Do you know what I mean? So it is challenging. Um, so hopefully for these this next series, I can do it justice. <laughs> I think we'll do good. <laughs> I, I I think I am on the right track too. Cause I feel like if the balance comes in, like you don't have too much, like one character isn't in a different book too much, you know? So I think we'll be okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, so I know I really like um, making playlists for my books and listening to music while I write. So I'm curious, do you listen to music while you write? I do. Uh, lately, I've been listening to a lot of K-pop. Um, I have. I'm all, I'm also the kind of person who, once they listen to a song and like a song, they'll listen to it on repeat. And I have just recently discovered "Dear John" by Taylor Swift, so that's been on repeat on my playlist. But I definitely am a person who needs to listen to music, otherwise, like I can't focus, which is kind of weird but and I, it needs to be music with lyrics because I know a lot of people are the opposite they need to if they have music it needs to be instrumental but I just need something else to stimulate my brain kind of yeah do you make um playlists for each individual book I do after the fact which is kind of funny I should be doing it like as I'm writing the book I should make a playlist of the songs that I'm listening to but I more so make the playlists with the songs that fit the book um, because I think that's just more fun. Um, but I do it more so after the fact, after it's like closer to release, because that's one of the um, things I use to help promote it. Okay. So like during the actual writing, you just listen to whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have a certain song that you like really associate with each book, like each book's prime song? basically? <sighs> So Water Friends 4 is definitely, obviously, You Belong With Me by Taylor Swift, yes, like hands that. down, hands down. Um, and I know um, Can't Catch My Breath, one that I always associate with that book, and not necessarily because the lyrics match up, but it's like Daphne Blue by the band Camino. That's one that I've always just kind of related to with that book and it might be because I listened to it and I'm like this definitely sounds like the kind of music I think untapped potential would play um and it's kind of funny and then for teaching the teacher's pet right now one that I like always think about and it came to me so randomly because this was a song that I listened to like in I think it was like my middle school days it's called um it's the song Loser Like Me by the Glee cast, I think, something like that. Loser Like Me, I think. But it's anyway, it's by the Glee cast. And it was, it's like so fitting for that book. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to go listen to it because I, I never heard any Glee stuff. So See, I've never even watched Glee. So I have no idea how it came across, like m- across me back in the day, but yeah, no, it's it's kind of perfect for it, and it's funny. That's awesome. Um, so since most of your, well, all of your books take place um, when the characters are in high school, have you ever considered writing a, like, sequel or kind of new adult um, series where it just, like, follows your characters in college or, like, when they're out of college, kind of navigating adulthood for the first time? 
I haven't really thought about following these characters, although that would, would be so fun. I feel like it'd be really fun to see like each of the individual, like Remy and Sophia and all them in college, because I feel like they'd be so different in college. But I have thought about branching out into new adult, um, kind of like here and there, um, because there are a few like themes, well, not necessarily themes, because I don't think I'd ever branch out of the kind of sweet romance genre that I'm in. But I feel like it would be fun to explore the kind of college life and write something that way. So I've definitely thought about it. Okay. How do you think your characters would change going into college? I feel like they would, uh, I don't know. I feel like they would definitely probably drink where in these books, I think the only character that really drink, like there's really depiction of alcohol is in What Are Friends For? And I did it once like that. And I'm like, eh, and maybe a little bit in Out of My League too. Um, but and I just kind of haven't touched it really since. But I feel like that's probably one. I'd probably, they'd probably do parties. They'd probably go to parties. But I would probably still leave out the more sexual elements that tend to like kind of occur in the college age, um, sort of writing and stuff. So maybe they wouldn't be that different. They would just be exploring more mature, like trying to figure out who they are um, outside of high school and things like that, probably. I well, It probably wouldn't be a good thing because I personally have not gone to college. I've never been to college or like on campus college. I've done online, but so I, <laughs> it might not be the best for me to write, but it would require a lot of research. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about like college stuff. <laughs> Yeah, and, I, and I'm i not a good researcher. That's kind of why I write contemporary and not like historical or anything like that. It's because when it comes to researching, I get so bored so fast, which is probably why I never thought to research football. But yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. Research can be so boring, especially when you're like doing it for school. Like I'm, I'm a sophomore, almost a junior. So I have to do research papers and it's soul crushing. Oh my gosh. Yes. That was probably the, my least favorite thing is doing research for research papers. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is just like a fun, um, would you rather question? So would you rather play baseball with Walsh um, make coffee art with Vincent or sing a song with Harry. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Well, it probably, as much as I love Harry, I probably would not want to sing with him because I would feel so embarrassed because I'm, I would be like Distel when he drags her up on stage. It'd be a no-go for me. I would be, yeah, but oh my gosh, fudge. What would I want to do? Probably, probably. Mm, Probably, I don't know. I, I'm leaning towards make coffee art. That's what I'm leaning towards. I feel like baseball would still be fun, but I've had so much trauma when it comes to sports, like hitting me in the face every single time. Same. <laughs> every time. Like, what is it? <laughs> I know. So probably, probably coffee art. <laughs> play, play it safe. <laughs> Were you the kid in like gym class in school that always just like hid in the corner? Yes. Yes. <laughs> And it's funny because my gym teacher honestly did not care. So she would let people just hide. We hid in the locker rooms. So yes, it was the best. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, so how did you go about tackling more serious topics in your writing? Like the ones present in If the Room Fits and Can't Catch My Breath. Weirdly enough, it like I didn't plan for it to be as heavy as those books were. And if I had given it more thought, I'm not sure I, well, I wouldn't change anything. Um, but it kind of was going into a more serious direction, especially with If the Room Fits being serious. And then the next book, Can't Catch a Breath, having more serious topics. Um, I, if I would have thought about it, I might've like differentiated a little bit. So that way it wasn't lighthearted with What Are Friends For, lighthearted with Out of My League, and then two heavy books kind of after that. Um, and it was, it's funny because I didn't intend for them to be as heavy as they were. Like, Can't Catch a Breath, um, Addie's dad's death, actually, when I first wrote it, happened a year prior. So it wasn't as fresh as it ended up being in the final draft. Um, so 
it was actually kind of interesting and it was a bit of a challenge, especially for um, can't catch a rat because I personally have not lost a parent. Um, so it was really interesting tackling kind of that, that level of grief and anxiety when it comes to losing a parent. Um, but it was definitely fun to kind of get out of my comfort zone and try to write something that I didn't really know. Um, but yeah, it definitely was not intentional. I don't, I don't know where it came from. I don't know why I just decided to write something. Okay. Let's kill off the parents. Like, yeah. okay. It's always the parents. <laughs> it's always the parents, always the parents. <laughs> Um, so the other books in the Love and Fenton County series that we talked about before that weren't published, did you get far enough into outlining those that you knew whether or not they were going to be on the more lighthearted or serious side? Yeah, I think so. I actually did write Edith's book um, and that one was going to be more lighthearted, kind of more of a balance, I would say, because she, I think with her, she was struggling because she has a little brother and her little brother is kind of like rebelling and stuff because she doesn't have a mom. Dang, her mom died too. Like what the heck? Um, so that one probably wasn't nearly as lighthearted as What Are Friends For, but wasn't as serious as Can't Catch a Rat somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, and then another character that was going to have their own book was Molly and she was in Can't Catch My Breath. And her book was going to be more lighthearted. Yeah. And then the last one that was going to have a book was Margot and hers was going to be kind of more sophisticated, but not necessarily heavy. Cause she's, I feel like she's a very sophisticated character. So yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, so how many, back to the um, new series, how many books are planned to be in the most likely two series and what is like the ten tentative release schedule for them if you kind of like plan that out yet yeah so so right now as of right now I'm hoping to be able to write them all like I have so so far I have seven outlined and I probably have concrete ideas for five of them um I have the other two that I don't really know very well outlined still but I feel like they're just not as prominent in my head as the other ones are um Mostly because I've been thinking more about the other ones because the ones I'm not sure of are five and six. So I feel like I haven't been really thinking about them as much, but a tentative release schedule. So book one is coming out um, August. I wanted to kind of fast release these books, um, at least the first few. So I thought book two would come out mid-October mid to late October. Um, book three would come out in January. Book four would be out in either April or March. Um, then book five would be out in August. Book six would probably be out in January because that's kind of where I drop off of the fast release schedule. And then book seven would be probably more June, so. Okay. So you've got it planned out like for the next I do. few years. <laughs> I really do. It's mostly because I was just trying to like figure out for me, like what, how many books I'd be publishing each year, like as an idea kind of, but yeah, for the next two years, it's going to be, it's going to wow. be fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so I'm curious since you were doing a lot of like research on football, how big of a role does it play in the most likely two series? So not a whole lot in book one. Um, I think I I I think I'm gonna go through while I'm doing my final edits and proofs. I'm probably gonna see where I can add it back in a little bit because my main character doesn't really know much about football, so it doesn't make sense for her to be like, oh, and the quarterback ran like. I can't speak technical about football. So it wouldn't make sense for her to speak technical about football because she doesn't know what it did like much about it. Mm -hmm. um, book two though, my main character knows more about football. So I probably will be layering that in. And then book four is heavy on football. So it's still kind of like a running theme in all of the books. And book seven is also heavy with football, but it's not necessarily like a, a huge plot point per se. 
if that makes sense. Like the whole school revolves around football. So it's kind of present, but not like to take over the plot or anything like that. Okay. What made you decide to pick that sport out of all the like high school sports? For my school, my school loved football. And we actually had, when I was growing up, more so in elementary school, we had a kind of football rival that we always looked forward to um, playing every year. And so growing up, I'd always loved going to football games, even though for the most part, I was just like running around in the adjacent field with all the other little kids who didn't want to watch the sport. Um, But I loved going to the football games and like how the atmosphere is. And I loved how the community community kind of came together around the sport. And I've always wanted to write a football book. I didn't really necessarily plan for it to be such a huge role in kind of like the series and everything. Um, But I feel like more it would make sense more so for me to focus on football for experiences um, along the lines of like themes and stuff because even though I know a bit about baseball I feel like my school didn't have much of a community around baseball so I wouldn't wouldn't really know how to like accurately detail out the kind of emotions that come with those kinds of sports or basketball either you know does that make sense yeah yeah <laughs> okay I'm just talking like does, it makes sense in my head I'm like does that make sense talking it out loud <laughs> and I didn't really go to many um baseball games and I didn't really go to many basketball games when I went whereas I went to a lot of football games so I feel like I have more of a knowledge of that kind of atmosphere yeah you can like write about being there and the yeah at- yes Yes, like I I can talk about the experience. I can't talk about the the plays. I don't know anything about that, but yeah. Um, so what sorts of tips or pieces of advice do you have for other aspiring authors who are considering taking the self-publishing route? I think my biggest tip would be to educate yourself as much as you can. Um, because for me, I kind of went into it where I'm, I was like, I'm just going to self-publish. And although that's like, you know, back then that was fine. If I hadn't had the self-publishing course by Sarah Cannon, I wouldn't really know what I was doing and it wouldn't be as good of a launch as it would have been. I think to making sure you're prepared for the launch, you know, making sure you're marketing, um, well beforehand really is key to your success in the long term so if you were to just like okay quick buy a cover get a blurb write a first draft then publish it um it just won't help you in the long term so my biggest tip would be to like get as much information as you can author tube was a hugely great place um for those kinds of things um and whenever sarah cannon has her course come around that's a hugely helpful resource Um, And then also some other freebies, like the self-publishing formula has like um, blog posts, Readsy has blog posts, but just being as educated you can, as you can about the process will help make things smoother and like really help you in the long term. Okay. Yeah. Um, So what was one thing that you wish you had known back when you were like getting ready to release um, What Are Friends For? That's a really good question. I feel like, hmm, what would I, what would I wish I had known? It's funny because for some reason, I can't really quite put myself back into that headspace to think like, okay, what did I not know? Do you know what I mean? So I I feel like I'm trying to think. Hmm. I feel like I would have liked to have better known how to handle like criticism and praise. I feel like, but but when you're first starting out, you're not going to really know how to handle those things. Um, So it makes sense that you can only learn through experience. But I wish back then I had had more of the confidence in myself more than I did um, because I actually had decided to self-publish after being rejected from a publishing company that I've been working with for over a year. And that took a huge ding to my self-esteem. 
And so to like kind of protect myself from that, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to self-publish and I'm going to publish this book and it's going to be great. And so I remember the first time I got my first negative review, it kind of like crushed me because I'm like, oh, that that um, publishing company was right. It, my books shouldn't be published, all that stuff. Whereas I wish I had been a bit better about taking the criticisms and praise and kind of analyzing both and not taking both to heart so much like the praise didn't want to let it like build my ego or anything like that and then the criticism I didn't want to let it like pop that ego until there was nothing left do you know what I mean yes so I wish there was more of a balance I knew more how to be confident in myself and I was proud of what I was doing so I, I wish I knew that that could be enough back then do you read reviews like on Goodreads and Amazon and stuff? Do you ever like go on there and read them? I don't necessarily anymore. It'll be like once in a blue moon where I will. Um, especially well, when a book comes out, that's when I first will read them just to like be able to put like um, the advanced reviews on like Amazon and stuff um, or like to use it as marketing materials. But after probably after I probably get the first few ARC reviews in, I will stop reading them, the reviews, and I'll have somebody look them over and make sure like nothing glaring is wrong. Um, that way I know like I'm not making any like massive plot hole errors or anything like that. But for me and for my kind of mental health, I don't. Um, a lot of people will say like, you should read reviews, you shouldn't read reviews. But for me personally, it, I don't know. I like to be able to, write without letting anybody else kind of bias me one way or the other so I try not to but then there's that always like part of you that is curious and so sometimes I will find myself looking on Goodreads but yeah, yeah. um so what kind of marketing strategies did you use when you were first getting ready to release what are friends for to just kind of like put yourself out there in your name and your writing and everything like that that was a really strange time because I was really just throwing anything at the wall and hoping it would stick um because back then I didn't know much about like I didn't know very many authors in my genre who wrote and so I really didn't have anything to kind of like base my marketing strategy off of because for the most part I was on Twitter a whole lot. Um, and Twitter is not the best place to market a book, whereas Amazon is much better because you have the visuals of Amazon. Um, so back then I was just kind of posting anything that I, I was actually really bad at marketing back then because I would post a lot of like personal things, a lot of like, um, like writing posts, like a picture of my desk or a picture of my, my notebook rather than kind of getting the branding of the cover image out there. Um, so in, it, it wasn't great. It, it could have been better, but <laughs> I feel like it was just random. I would randomly share quotes. I would randomly share like pictures of the book's interior and things like that. So it was definitely not as cohesive as it could have been. <laughs> Do you think it's kind of like improved as you've published more books and grown in that way? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think by the time I got to If the Room Fits, I had a good idea of how I wanted to market. And then when I got to Can't Catch a Breath, I kind of discovered working with an aesthetic on Instagram worked for me. Um, and so I think once I got past If the Room Fits, and If the Room Fits, like during it was really easy. Um, because that's when I really leaned heavily into the colors of If the Room Fits' is cover and like the holiday season of If the Room Fits. And going into Can't Catch Her Breath, I realized, oh, I'll just stick to that color theme of Can't Catch Her Breath as well. And then I've just kind of carried it through. So I definitely think as each book goes on, I've been able to like figure out the best way to market it with color schemes and things like that. So it's definitely improved. Thank goodness. <laughs> Um, so I think it was last year or the year before, um, for What Are Friends 4's um, one year anniversary, you um, changed the cover from this one to a different one. Um, so what went into that uh, decision? Like what made you decide to change the cover? 
What Are Friends For was the only book in the Love and Fenton County series. Well, at that point, there was only two other books out there. Okay, so What Are Friends For and was different from Out of My League and If the Room Fits. And I knew I wanted to kind of carry through the um, theme of the book, the series of the book. I wanted to create a series. And I was like, and I had, at that point, I had already launched the pre-order for Can't Catch My Breath, I believe. So the cover would have already been launched. So it was going to be the whole same series, but What Are Friends For was the only book that looked different. And I'm like, well, I could take it out of the book of the series entirely, or I could just change the cover. And I, as much as, as nostalgic as that cover is, I really do love this, this whole like setup we had going with the text in the bottom and the couple on the top. And so I had reached out to my cover designer and I just asked if she, if she could make a, no, I didn't. I didn't reach out to her. I made it myself. That's right. I'm looking at it right now. I did. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, because I, I made it myself because I, my cover designer was on vacation for yeah she was on vacation and I'm like well I want to change it for the um one year anniversary and so I actually had the template of the couple and the and the text in the bottom and so I can I could probably make this myself and I I did and then I had somebody make the the back cover and the spine because I could never <laughs> ever do that that's no <laughs> but um that's right I reached out to a designer to do the back but I did make the cover myself. I forgot all about that. <laughs> That's so cool that you made it yourself. Yeah, and I've, I've tried to make one of my covers myself since then. Oh my gosh, that's rough. So it was it was really luck that that one turned out the way that it did. <laughs> yeah, I keep meaning to get the new version because I still have the old cover. <laughs> I love that though. I love that so much. Yeah, these are my like top three. Favorite yeah series. I love them two kinds of us especially is so cute yeah. I feel like that's one of the underdogs of the whole series mm -hmm. um so have you ever like imagined what your books would be like if they were made into movies or tv like do you have a dream cast picked out oh I a dream I, I feel like I've done a casting for some of the books before but now I can't remember any of them oh I do remember for what are friends for I thought this was a few years ago now so she might be a little bit too old but I thought Sabrina Carpenter would be perfect for Remy um for what are friends for and I I feel like what are friends for and Adam and League would make perfect movies like those two especially perfect movies um I I don't know. And I, I can't remember what um, out of my leagues was. I know I didn't really um, cast Walsh because there was nobody that could like live up to like how he looks in my head. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like if I could, if I could pick any movie, any book of mine to be a movie, I think it, oh, I don't know. I'm between what are friends for and out of my league. I think I think Water Friends 4 would be really cute. Oh no, Out of My League would be cute too. Maybe Out of My League would be the best, I think. Because I feel like Water Friends 4, the blindfold scene would be really cute, but I think the entirety of Out of My League would make for a good movie. Yeah, I think so too. Um, do you write your characters with any certain like actor or person in mind, or do you have like kind of your own vision of what they look like that like no actor can fill? Weirdly enough, I don't, I don't really write them with kind of any visual in mind, which is bizarre. I don't know if it's because like it's first person instead of like, so I'm not looking at them as a character so much as I'm, when I'm writing them, I kind of pretend, it sounds weird, but I pretend like I am them to be able to know what they're thinking and everything. Um, so I, it's weird, but I don't really imagine like my main characters with anything in mind um but with the love interest usually I don't really picture them as an actor I usually just picture them like I have a certain way that I match them in my mind but yeah <laughs> that's cool oh have you ever used um Amazon 
ads to promote your books at all? Yeah, I have. And I'm right now I'm actually, I work with an ads management company. So right now they're kind of toying with Amazon ads for me because I used to do it myself and it went okay, but I feel like ads are just one thing that I'm never fully confident in. And like, I'll spend money and I'm like, does this even helping? Like, I don't even know. It does, this, especially with Facebook ads, because Facebook ads, you have to make your own kind of image for it. Whereas Amazon ads, it's kind of just, it's more technical. And I am not a technical person. Like I can't figure out keywords and negative search terms and so I, I have played around with it, but right now I am using a company because it's just a different side of my brain that I don't like to touch. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen results with those ads or do you feel like um, social media has worked out better? I, I've definitely seen results. And I think, but I think if you were to do focus one or the other, if you, like, if you didn't have money, I don't think it's a deal breaker as long as you are on social media. Um, but I think if you do have the money, it is a good idea to invest because for me, I have personally seen um, an upkick in sales since starting Amazon and Facebook ads. Okay. Um, do you have any tips for like building up a platform on Instagram or Facebook? I think um, for Instagram, for me, what really helps was I, I, in, I more so established myself as an author, like as a person who was like a writer, there we go, as a writer before I established myself as an author. So I had kind of more so targeted um, writers rather than other readers. Um, because I do think targeting readers is a lot more difficult than targeting authors because um, with authors, they can read your caption and instantly connect with you. Whereas readers, they can read your caption and just keep scrolling because they haven't read the book, you know? So for me, um, targeting writers has been helpful. And then asking questions in my posts has always been really helpful. Um, kind of sticking to a cohesive theme in terms of like posting pictures on Instagram, because when it's kind of, when the color scheme is cohesive, it's like easier and pleasing on the eye. So when somebody goes to your profile, they'll like be more likely to skim through your posts and like follow and stuff. Um, for Facebook, it's really been kind of one of those platforms that I haven't tried a whole lot on. I know back in the day, I tried to like transfer some of my Twitter followers over onto Facebook. And that's why I think I, I, think I have 800 followers on Facebook. And that's probably where most of those came from was from Twitter. Because Facebook's a little bit more hard, it's, it's harder for me to kind of like grow on because I'm not sure how you like reach people on Facebook so much as like on Instagram, you can use hashtags um, and those are really helpful. But um, also varying hashtags, varying your hashtags has I've, I've found has helped a lot too. Do you find that um, like posting more often helps? I haven't really noticed. Lately, I haven't been posting a whole lot. Um, I do post Instagram reels every single day and that's actually helped a lot in terms of finding followers or followers finding me, I guess, um, for when videos do like do well, um, people do follow me from that. So I've gotten a lot of followers from that. But I haven't really noticed whether or not posting consistently to like the feed posts, like the pictures. I haven't noticed if that makes a whole lot of a difference. Lately, I've just been so sporadic about when I post that I probably should sit down and test it. Um, but I haven't noticed. Okay. Um, which of your books has like been the best seller out of all of them so far? Uh, I think it would definitely be out of my league, especially after last month. So I had a TikTok and an Instagram reel go viral, both focusing on out of my league. And it got as low as number 33 in the Amazon store and the entire Amazon store. That's so so I would say it's definitely that one. <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. It was insane. It was so crazy. Yeah, oh. Have any of your other books ever ranked that high before? I don't think so. I think the only, I think Waterfronts 4, as low as it had gotten, was 400. 
and that was on a sale day. Um, but otherwise, I don't think so. I think out of, it goes like out of my league, and then Water Friends Four are like the two top performing ones, and the other ones, I don't know. I feel like they're just. I think it's because there's not an established trope for them. Like they're in the in the tropes like opposites attract isn't as popular as friends to lovers is. So mm -hmm. that could be the case. But yeah, definitely out of my league. <laughs> How has your switch to um Kindle Unlimited been? Because I know you were like kind of nervous about it before. Yeah, I was really nervous about it. And I do remember before I switched, maybe like a year before I switched, like September of 2020. I had told my mom, I was like, don't ever let me switch into Kindle Unlimited because all that I had heard were negative things from Kindle Unlimited. And so I was like, don't let me ever do that. Talk me out of it if I ever tell you that I'm going to do it. And so when I did decide to make the switch in September of 2021, my the um, August of 2021, my sales were the lowest they'd been since I published in January of 2020. And so I'm like, you know what? it can't hurt. I mean, it could hurt, but like I, I, at that point I was willing to try anything and to try it just to say that I tried it. And so since switching to Kindle Unlimited, I have had consistently the best months of my self-publishing career. I've this entire year, I've gone past my top month of 2020. So it's definitely been a great transition for me. And I think that might be because I have so many books in Kindle Unlimited. Right now I do have six. Um, so if somebody reads one and they like it, they have five other ones to go through. And I feel like the genre that I am in is doing well in Kindle Unlimited as well. And a lot of my comp authors are also in KU. So it just kind of made sense to make that transition because I don't know if there's a lot of contemporary romance authors who aren't in KU. If you know if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So 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 far I've 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 found it to be very beneficial and I'm very excited that I made the switch when I did. That's great. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Um, so what are your goals for the rest of 2022, like writing wise? Oh, well, I do want to be able to write. Um, I want to get the first three books in the series um, fully done, obviously, especially for um, to teaching the teachers, Pat, because that is coming out in August. I want that to be fully done. But I do want to get up to like the first three fully done by the end of the year. Um, because I do plan on publishing book two in October. So obviously I'd hope I'd hope for that to be fully done. But um, for book three, which I don't want to publish until January, probably, I hope that's fully done by the end of the year. And then hopefully book four at least has a first draft written. I think those are my, I mean, that might be a little bit ambitious, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed about that. I think that would be, that would be really great if I could have up to book four, at least to have the first draft. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's kind of what's next for you, just kind of getting all of that done. Yeah, there's not really much. Yeah, I would say that's what's next, which is exciting, but. Um, did you get a cover poster for Teaching the Teacher's Pet? I didn't, I didn't. Um, and it was really, like I forgot about it. That's kind of why. Um, and I, if I were to get one, I have to figure out where I want to put it because there's a few like this is an open space, but it's just a smidge too small for my standard 20 by 30 poster. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd have to figure out like the next size down and order it. But I just, I've just been lazy. I haven't done it yet. And I really should because it's a beautiful cover and it would look great yeah. on a poster. Um, but I just haven't done it yet. <laughs> okay. I feel like you could have like the Love and Fencing County wall and then like the most likely to wall. Yes. I think that'd be so fun. And what I could do honestly is like give these posters away as like a giveaway or something and then get smaller posters. So that way I could have maybe like one on top, one on the bottom. Like, so I could have two per kind of column, you know, mm -hmm. um, I could do that too. So that would be fun though. Yeah, you could like sign them and give them away. That would be really fun. That would be really fun. <laughs> um, and so my last question, since we're almost at the hour, um, what was one thing that you would want to tell your younger self? 
Ooh, ooh, that's a good one. Uh, hmm. I would probably tell myself that it is possible. Like, because when I was growing up, probably from like the third grade, I realized that people can publish books and make money. But around middle school, I was starting to feel discouraged because I did have a few teachers who were like, okay, that's not a career. You need to have a career. Um, And so towards the end of middle school and more so, and then the following the first three years of high school, I was kind of like, okay, that's probably not going to be possible. What do I want to do instead? And so, and I felt really discouraged and lost because that was such huge identity of me in middle school, especially, um, was writing. I used to write One Direction fan fiction. (laughs) Um, So I was just like so absorbed with writing. And then to have been told like, oh no, it's not possible. You need a real job. That was discouraging. So I feel like I would go back and tell myself, hey, like we have, we have six books out. We're working on our seventh. It's possible, you know, and kind of encourage myself that way. Um, because anything's possible if you put your mind to it. And I, I fully believe that I, I would have told myself that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So those are all my questions. I just want to say thank you so much. I'm a huge fan. So this was really, really cool for me. <laughs> oh, so much fun. I cannot believe an hour flew by. It felt like it was like 20 oh, minutes. <laughs> I went by so fast, but seriously, thank you so much. I will be awaiting teaching the teacher's pet to come out. I'm going to order a copy as soon as the paperback pre-order is up. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm so excited. I cannot wait to hear what you think of it. Yeah, August is my birthday month, so it's like my birthday present to myself. (laughs) Oh my gosh, it's perfect. (laughs) Yes. All right, so thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, have a great rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye.